So, <clears throat> yeah, the final, my final, uh, the, the same, I haven't succeeded in alienating everybody yet. My final example here, of a current issue, which I think most of the, almost everybody is wrong on, which I think libertarians should sail into, is the, uh, the Alaska oil spill. I'm sure you're all familiar with I couldn't see anything on TV. TV news are getting the point. All you get is medical news, and once in a while you get something of the Alaskan oil spill. I mean, I've known, I'm now intimately familiar with every study and report that's been done on cancer and heart disease and 20 other obscure diseases now, just from watching the regular news program. At any rate, uh, here you have the oil spill. Okay, who's blamed for the oil spill? Exxon. Seems to me Exxon is precisely the act of people we should feel sorry for. Exxon loses 10 million gallons of oil, which is approximately $5 million, plus the money they have to pay, and I think correctly so, the people who lost that because of the oil spill, the fishermen, and all the rest of it. Okay. So Exxon are the losers, allegedly from, from an allegedly drunk and sea captain. Okay. Uh, and yet Exxon is being boycotted, constantly attacked, etc., etc. Uh, and if you look, if you look at the and what we, we're suffering from is essentially environmentalist infection here. Because when, if you look at the environmentalist propaganda here, what they're saying is, it's a terrible, they're not talking about the, really about the fishermen, they're talking about the otters, they're talking about the, they're talking about the water. In fact, the water is no longer blue. Uh, it's now white or whatever, it's now black or brown because of the oil. So in other words, the rights of, but it used to be the rights of a snail daughter become greater than the rights of human beings, or the rights of the caribou, uh, or whatever. Now it's the rights of the water. The right, the right of the natural right of the water remain pristine. It seems to be totally idiotic. But that's the sort of, that's the, that's the uh, language in which this is counted. Exxon are not the liberally bump the oil. <laughs> They're the ones who lost from it. And the thing is, the economists who say, well, we can fix up this problem by, ex by internalizing the externality, by forcing, say, Exxon to pay damage. They're doing that anyway. That's not really the problem. It's much deeper than that. <clears throat> uh, the last big was the the Amico Cadiz tanker off the coast of France about 1979, I think. And I, don't, I don't think there was any big fuss made about it at all. It was much bigger. It was about 60 million gallons. Uh, nobody complained. There was nothing big on television about it. They paid, I think Amico paid about uh, $500 million for a liability. And that was it. There was no big thing. Nobody boycotted Amico. And all the rest of it. And I think this is an example of the way the extent to which environmentalism has spread in the last intervening decade. Uh, and I think what we have with the the, uh, the oil pipeline, which they're trying, of course, to shut down, the big argument against it was for many years, which held up the development, was the fact that the caribou migratory patterns would be disturbed. Uh, I mean, the caribou's got lots of land up there in Alaska. There's tundra, you know. Huge amount of land. There's lots of land to walk around in, but the, the idea, the objection was the caribou would be disturbed by, by the pipeline. Well, they built the pipeline. It turns out the caribou loved it because it's nice and warm. <laughs> and they, they literally they snuggle up to, to the pipeline for the nice warmth. So we have, we really, we have a group of people which, which have not been explored enough, I think. An environmentalist movement is essentially an anti human movement. It's a movement which wants to roll back the Industrial Revolution, wants to go back to the primitive period when man and nature were allegedly in balance, uh, which means, of course, wiping out about 95% of the human race, and, uh, and, uh, and, and ele elevating the alleged rights of animals, insects, fish, water, mountains, uh, everything except people. Uh, those of us who take this position are called speciesists, I prefer to call it humanist. I mean, human beings being the, the prime, the prime uh, priority here. Um, I, I've been writing some anti-environmentalist articles in Liberty Magazine, and the last uh, couple of weeks ago, the August chairman of the August New Jersey Libertarian Party called up uh, the head of the, of the Center for Libertarian Studies and demanded that they, he fire me as the editor of the journal of Libertarian Studies for daring to attack environmentalism. So. Uh, my friend, who's the head of the center, said it seems to be a lot easier for him to fire himself a subscriber. Nobody's <laughs> so forcing him to subscribe to the, to the journal. So that sort of stuff, uh, I think, has to be tackled because uh, whereas socialism, as, uh, as I mentioned this, this afternoon, is collapsed. I mean, it's imploded. It's collapsed. Nobody's a socialist anymore. Uh, but we have a rise in various other forms of interventionism, in particular environmentalism and other egalitarianism and other measures, hatred of the rich and things like that, which still persist. So um, there's lots of work for us to do, but I think the climate has gotten a lot, political climate has gotten a lot better with the 
with, a, with the retirement of Reagan to the to his ranch in Santa Barbara, we now have a much more flexible and open uh, political system where you have a chance to move, and I hope we do it. Thank you very much. Yeah, back there, lady, back there in the wall. I mean, those who are interested in environmentalism, there are plenty of pro-environmentalist libertarians who can work on bringing them to the fall. It's not my, I don't consider it my function. But at any rate, I'm certainly not against it. Uh, the, uh, I mean, I, I read, I mean, I, yeah, I urge you to rethink the thing too. I mean, I, the environmentalist literature that I've read is explicitly anti-human. It basically starts with what we start off by saying that before people arrive, everything was great. It was a balance of nature. Everything, everything was, the environment was all balanced, the species were balanced. And then man comes along and screws everything up. Man is linear instead of being this beautiful circle. And man changes the environment, dominates it. It's a terrible thing. That seems to be the basic philosophical environmentalist position uh, for a long time now. That's the stuff I've read. So uh, that, you know, if, if you take a moderate position and you're not an anti human, great. But it seems to me that's the fundamental basis because when the push comes to shove, when it's us versus the snail daughter or us versus the caribou or something, it's always them all the time, not us. You know, that's, that's the way I look at it.